Hello everyone, welcome to Toffee Tube. What's up? Let's talk about the Venice Film Festival 2022 red carpet outfits. The event is still going on, many stars surprised us with their flawless looks and some of them showed up with a simpler appearance. If you haven't watched the part 1 review of the Venice Festival 2022, which is about the first 3 days of the red carpet, feel free to check this out on my channel. I put the link in the description and also the card section. For this upload, which is a part 2 video of some remarkable looks, I took a look at the other stars on the red carpet and explain why some of them left a specialist and why some were a flop. Please stay and watch the video till the end, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads. The first one is Sydney Sweeney that I have to confess this Armani dress really suits her. Just when many of you probably expect to see her in a mini skirt, she understands the assignment well and enters the red carpet of the Venice Film Festival in a chic maxi dress. Well, as it is clear, this dress is a simple maxi made of two colors of fabric. The upper strap, which actually completes the strapless state of the dress, is attached from the back also and a significant cutout can be seen in the back of the dress. Undoubtedly, the most important detail of this game which distinguishes it from other maxis is the big bow inserted instead of a strap or collar or any regular features that the eyes got used to it. A bow tie is wrapped around her neck. On one side it is tied with the back strap and on the other side it falls very elegantly on the bodice. The image that is created in the end is very attractive and has turned it into one of her successful styles. The hairdo also is well combined with the gown she is wearing, especially the bow decorated on her hair. One of the best dressed celebrities of this year's Venice red carpet, I guess, is Judy Turner Smith. As I already talked about her successful denim gown from Ballman, her other style that she showed up with is this painted dress from Christopher John Rogers. The crayon painting on the dress just takes you to another world. Apart from the concept of this art, the fact that its designers and painters were able to combine different colors together and achieve this result shows their high intelligence and skill. Showcasing all these different colors together cannot necessarily give a pleasure result. Due to the georgette base of the fabric, the painting sits on it as if the texture was like this from the beginning. So natural and professional. And apart from the issue of painting on the fabric, the dress design and fitting are absolutely perfect. It fits well on Judy and the train feature adds to the aesthetics. Everything about the styling of this dress is done correctly. Since the dress itself has a regular round neck, she used a choker-like necklace and matching earrings to complete the look. It is well fitted that it seems it's a part of the garment. I mean, this is really Really enjoyable to look at. The next one is Julianne Moore in this dramatic gown from Valentino. It's a transparent strappy dress over the black panty and the cape over it is the ace card of the whole attire. I mean, she left me speechless with this look. Forget other dresses that she's worn at this year's event, this dress is something else. The rich embellishments on the sheer dress and the colorful sequins worked on it are stunning to the eye. The embroidery result kinda seems like a dandelion or flower art depiction I guess feels like Elisap or Zohar Murad. I'm very surprised to see that this dress is from Valentino. While it has a see-through concept, the balance has been well observed and it's not hurting the eyes. There is no extra features to create unnecessary engagement. So I can say this whole style was so successful. The next one is Melissa Sada in this blue gown from Alberto Ferretti. The first thing that catches the eye in this look is the color. The implementation of the dress, which has been done with chiffon fabric, perfectly resulted in an admirable gown. The side slit spiced it up and made it more dramatic. While the fabric texture is so soft and a little transparent, her breast is shown, which I guess that's optional. She could use nipple pastries or request some additional features to hide it, while it's not that much extra to make harsh criticism. That's not the first thing to attract attention, so I'm fine with that. I'm fine! <laughs> I personally believe breast showing is another part of elegance. In this look, it's a risk, but overlookable at some points. The finishing at the bottom hemline resulted in some sinusoidal curves, which I don't think is intentional. The fabric may not have been ironed well, the sewing may have been done with a high degree of pressure, there may have been changes in the appearance of the dress during the transport and there is even a one person chance that it was really intentional and this is part of the design of the dress. What do you think? Should we overlook this one as well? 
The next one is Penelope Cruz as expected in a Chanel dress. The floral look of the gown and the modesty of the style is perfectly synchronized with her. Actually, the combination of black and pink worked well. By watching it closely, the lace detail of the fabric is obviously shown, while it may not be very clear from a distance or in the photos. I'm still kinda unsure about these fringe-like features at the hemline of the Chanel dresses, like they have to add detail at the end of everything. The circle neckline also is embellished in a different pinstripe black detail. All the features gathered together created a nice result that goes on her well and can be considered one of the most successful looks on the red carpet. I personally believe there was no need for a necklace, but anyway, she paired one with her style. Anna De La Russo is the next one in this blue gown from Armani. Like always, she styled this whole package herself and I can't wait to see what's going on here. The main factor of the look that is the blue dress is this ruched tool garment with a deeply plunging neckline and the expansion at the bottom. I'm not sure if this is the best option to wear on the red carpet. The finishing is kinda sloppy and I believe it could be soon much better. I can't figure out what's the problem exactly here, while the runway model wore this dress better. It is better implemented and the result is neither. As the headdress is a non-stop signature of Anna's style, this time again she completed her look with this black dramatic net headpiece. While she didn't neglect the accessories from jewelry to sunglasses, I guess she could ignore the headpiece this time. It's not adding any extra value to the style, nor is making it chicer. The next one is Barbara Palvin in this strappy dress from Armani. While I'm still waiting for her to show her best look at this year's Venice red carpet, this gown with all this richness and glitter is questionable. The pattern worked on the gown with all the crystals attached to it is shimmering. I just get the feeling that it is not giving the vibe. The dress is a simple maxi which has nothing special to say except for the patterns I mentioned. Although the dress is beautiful, I guess this time the wearer should have chosen something else or this gown in another color. The color is not the right choice in light of her skin color tone. I preferred if the dress had a darker shade or a color with more contrast with Barbara's skin tone. I would also rather see a necklace as well. By the way, the gold headpiece is really stunning. The next one is Laura Harrier in YSL. Like all the other eye-catching unique color outfits, this one also is another dress whose color catches the eye at first. This could be black, blue, gray, red, anything, but the liquid metal tone gave another concept to it. It's a long sleeve mini dress with a draping feature at the middle front and also a notable cutout at the breast. The neckline also is tied in a circle form with crystal embellishments. The ruches are so stunning. It's so delightful to look at. This look is similar to the one that Ross from Blackpink wore at the VMAs. Actually, it's not surprising, that was also from YSL. The design signature has been kept and it perfectly matched Laura. She completed her look with black tights, sandals, and a clutch. Among all the perfect looks on the red carpet, this dress is one of those satisfying ones. The next one is Alessandro Ambrosio in Alberto Ferretti's dress. This is another successful style from Ali. The blue color dress with its light reflecting feature and all the rich embellishments on it is a strong yes to the red carpet. The sequins on the features worked on the material made a different picture out of the gown. The dress has no trains, no capes, no dramatic item to create extra engagement, while the 3D ornament says everything. The ombre feature created some color playing that is so amazing to look at. I already told this many times that is Alberto Ferretti's forte to combine lots of glittery items together, even in some cases if they are not so relatable, but again in the end, you're gonna see a perfect result. And this dress is no exception. The whole package of the style, the dress, the accessories, all together perfectly matched each other and created an eye-catching look from Alessandra. Last but not least is Sadie Singh who showed up on the Venice red carpet in this Alexander McQueen gown. The garment is a combination of the crystal embellishments on the bodies and the princess wipe tool on the bottom. There is this strapless detail at the breast with curvy cutouts at the waist which created some complexity to the look. And then the tool is applied to it with a dramatic image. The bodice fabric with all these forks on it could be a spectacular dress itself. While the tool added to it made a totally different concept out of it. The skirt could have gone at a little higher place but it's not hurting. The main goal which is being well dressed is observed already. She left her hair loose, avoided looking too much, kept it simple, and ta-da! The style is giving the vibe. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. Stay notified, Venice Festival has not finished yet, so I will upload further look reviews. I'd be so glad to know what is your opinion. Please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to see more content like this. So, see you soon.